Hello everyone, uh, we will be doing a demo today for Harmony controller. We will be registering different devices onto the Harmony controller and we will be going over the main features and capabilities of Harmony controller. I have 4 V Thunders which are a part of a VCS chassis and are created on ESXi. I have a standalone V Thunder on OpenStack and I have two hardware appliances which are a part of the VR or V chassis. Let's go over the registration process. From the CLI, you need to use the Harmony Controller Profile command. Provide the host name of the Harmony Controller or the IP address. The provider is root. The username and password is the one that you would like to use to log into the Harmony. Provide the region and the availability zone and then you can go ahead and register. To see the status of your registration, use the show harmony controller status command. We can see here that the registration has passed. In case of failure, you would see the message here. Logging into the web UI. You go to the system, admin and controller. Under the controller again you provide the host name. The port number by default is 8443. If you can access the device by your management port, use the use management port option. The IP to access Thunder for Harmony is used in case when you have a natted, natting device between your vThunder and the Harmony. So if you have your vThunder on the cloud, then you would provide the public IP over here. If you make any changes to any of these fields and you have already registered, you need to deregister first, make the changes and then register again. Since in our case we are already registered, we can go ahead and log into the Harmony controller. You can see the list of all the registered devices. Uh, it tells you that the OpenStack V Thunder is a standalone device, the ESXi is a VCS chassis, and the Thunder 4430 are in a VRRP chassis. Over here, it also gives you the status of the VCS devices. You can see that V Thunder 1 is the master, and the other three are the blade. It gives you the software version they are on, the management IP address and also gives you the resource utilization. By clicking on the actions here, you get to do a single sign-on to these devices. It makes it very convenient to directly log in to all of the managed devices. If you click on the device, you can see the details of all the partitions. I see I have a shared ADC1 and ADC2. Harmony by default creates a tenant per partition. The tenant for shared has the privilege to access all the partitions but if I use the tenant for a partition and log in I can only see the contents of that partition I have no visibility to the other partitions this makes, makes it very easy to create different tenants for different business units or customers and not have visibility to what others are doing let's click on this this will give us the analytics for partition ADC1. I have uh, two WIPs running uh, and I have services HTTP and HTTPS. Let's look at the analytics. Under the client tab, I see useful information like uh, the average throughput, the number of current connections, the average total requests that have come in, it also shows you the error counters. Currently we show HTTP errors and it gives me the amount of time it took for the client to receive the first byte from the server. I can see the average end-to-end -end latencies. I can see the location from where the requests are coming in. I can see all of the request method. I have delete, post, head and get. 
I can see all of the response codes. Uh, I see mostly 200s okay, but I also have a few 4xx and a fi few 5xx. So right off the bat, I already have the information about the failures that the devices are seeing. For the client tab, I can see a lot of information uh, like which OS is the request coming in from, uh, what browsers are in use, uh, what devices are being used. Uh, if I had any mobile device, I would see that here. And you can also see the list of top clients. Uh, this is basically telling you which client IPs are sending in the most request. Under the ADC service, it shows me the caching information. I can see that I have 18% of the requests being cached. The cache hit rate is about 98 requests per second. I can see the average throughput and I can see the list of servers here. Uh, I have 8 servers right now and each has about 15% of CPU utilize 15% uh, of uh, load distribution. Since I'm using the method round robin, I see a pretty even load distribution here. You have different views to see uh, the amount of throughput and the latencies on each of these servers. This also shows me the error traffic. Uh, I could filter based on a particular error traffic that I need to see the information for. All of this information by default is displayed for the last 6 hours. Uh, if I needed the information for a shorter amount of time or for a longer amount of time, I can change that here. The application tab gives me application specific information, uh, the response time for each application, the domains that are being hit. Uh, I'm sending all requests to a single web IP, so I see a single domain all the URLs that have been requested. You can see the app latencies, uh, which app port is being used, which is port 80 in my case. And you can also see the slowest transactions. Uh, this gives me very useful information about which URLs are taking the longest time. So let's select one of these. Uh, look at 16k.html. So we go to the table view and select 16k. So this will give you a detailed packet capture for each of these requests that went to 16k.html. Over here you can see the amount of time that each component took to reply. You also get all the information about which server was picked, the request info, the response info. We also see that there was another request which failed with a 504. So data transfer to client took about almost one second. So you no longer have to log into the device and take a packet capture. You have all of this information stored in one place. If we were to look at index.html, let's say if our client was complaining that they can't reach a particular page, I no longer need to go and take a packet capture. I can see that all of these are read and the response for these is 404, which means the request for this particular web page is failing. So it makes it very easy and gives you all of the information in one place which makes troubleshooting really simple. So for all of the charts here you have the table view. You can go to the table view and you can select that particular domain or that particular event and you will see the packet capture filtered based on that basis. App server shows me server specific information. Over here I can see the health check running on my servers. Uh, green indicates that all my servers are healthy and running. Uh, red indicates the times when the servers are down. Since I'm running traffic using Ixia, whenever I stop Ixia my traffic stops and hence my servers go down and the status is red. 
it also shows you the number of servers uh, if I had more it showed me that I had 12 and if I remove some servers it shows me that I have 8 servers it shows me more information like uh, the new connections on the server the response time and the number of current connections on the servers so overall you can see that we have a lot of options here to go over the details and easily find all the information in one place. Another important component of Harmony is the device manager. This truly provides you a centralized management of all the devices which have been registered to the Harmony controller. You can now easily upgrade to SSL certificate management, take config backups to logs to everything from one place. If you look over here, I have scheduled config ba uh, backups every day. So Harmony goes to every single device which has been registered and collects a configuration backup every day and you can easily access that information from here. Under device configuration, it shows you a list of all the startup profiles of all the devices which have been registered to the Harmony. It makes it very easy to locate all of this information. Another very useful thing is the SSL management. You can now easily push any of the certificates and keys to all the devices which are registered to the Harmony. You no longer need to individually log into each of the device and then import the certificates and clients. All you have to do is do a push Select the device, select the partition, and submit. Same thing for the key. So I could have done this for all of the devices. All I would have to do is select the list of all of them. Now that I have already pushed the certificate and the key, I can go ahead and also push a client SSL template. I have already created some scripts here. If you look at this, it's nothing but it's saying that create a client SSL template with a pushed sort and key. So I will go ahead and push. Select. ADC1. And submit. Let's go ahead and verify. SSL management. I see that the cert and key have been created here. And templates. SSL. I see that the client SSL template has also been created. So now with a single click, you can easily create any rules, any templates and push them to as many devices as you need to. You don't have to log into individual devices. You can centrally manage all the devices from one place. Another good example is, let's say if my app servers were running out of capacity, all I do is I create some more servers. I spin those up on my backend, bind them to the service group and I just go ahead and push them. I can go back here, SLB, I can see that those servers have been added here and I also see those servers under the service group. So now by a click of a button I have added 4 servers which are already taking traffic. A good way to debug stuff is you can go to the system and job execution results. Over here, if you have any failures, you would see the detailed report of why it failed. In our case, we had done a push. The last action we did was pushing for a server configuration and we see that it went through successfully. Also, when you add components on to the vThunders from the device manager, they are immediately available on the vThunder on the Harmony controller to monitor. So if I go back to my 
with under 1 ADC 1 if you see over here now I can see 12 servers instead of the initial 8 servers if I go under the ADC service I see that now there is traffic running on all of them so this really makes it easy for the user to be able to monitor all of their devices and also troubleshoot in case of failures and you can also centrally manage all of them push configurations push certificates and do upgrades and do a lot of other things uh, this is a very powerful tool and it's good to introduce our customers to this uh, this would conclude our demo for today uh, thank you